Today it is my pleasure to welcome to Shepherd's Grove and the Hour of Power, Crystal Hansen. Crystal is uh, married to the popular author Mark Victor Hansen, who we interviewed last week, who's here today. Hi, Mark. Good to see you. And uh, he was speaking to us, of course, about his uh, world-renowned Chicken Soup for the Soul book series. Crystal has worked alongside Mark in the creation of a children's version of uh, Chicken Soup, which is cool because actually today we're talking about kids. Yeah. She's a certified life coach and helped thousands of people, curing them of messy thinking, which each one of us has at our, uh, you know, at one time or another uh, in our lives. And this messy thinking lies in everyone's subconscious and in their thought process. Crystal, good morning. Thank good you for morning. joining us. Let's give her it's, a hand and really welcome her. Really great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So, what is, what is messy thinking? So, what happens is we all, um, from the time we take our very first breath, Bobby, we're, we're taking in all of these experience and experiences and events that happen in our life, and our brains, in, in their efficiency, record all of these experiences, right? We, we sure. make perceptions, and um, a lot of times those perceptions have inaccuracies or distortions or we delete information. But what happens is we set up our own neural network like a filtration system. So we start to filter the rest of our life by those programs that we have been put in our minds or we've accepted. Um, just things that happen, people around us, everyone's well-meaning, but stuff happens, right? Sure, and sure. so we build these programs sometimes that I call messy thinking. Because we, what, we look around at our lives and say, you know, this isn't working. I, I, I don't feel like I can have success in my marriage or success in my relationships with my kids or or success in my job, my career hasn't worked out, and we just keep sabotaging ourselves and wondering why, that's when we, we need to get to the bottom of it. And our subconscious mind is like a storage tank. It, yeah. it holds all these programs, and until we intervene deliberately, nothing really changes. I'm actually thinking it would be something like if I said, like, uh, I'm not good enough to do that, or if I said something like, um, I'm not going to tell a person that I'm frustrated with them or I'm not going to speak out against them. That's the kind of... Right, right. Because we have fears that we're not worthy, fears of rejection, fears that we're wrong, fear... So many fears. I mean, most of our problems in life are fear-based. And we all know that fear is really the enemy because it keeps us from expressing all that we were meant to be. I mean, we, we, have, we each have an important purpose in this life. Each person has a unique signature that they are here to do. And if our messy thinking is always getting in our own way, how can we ever become that full expression that God wanted us to be, right? Yeah. What's the, what's the most common thing that you see people kind of, you talk about messy thinking, you sit mm -hmm. with people, you're coaching them all the time. What's like the most popular messy thought, I guess, would be it? You know what it is? I'm, I'm not worthy. Like, I'm not good enough to, be, to manage this company, or uh, um, I'm not lovable. So we do all kinds of things, all kinds of behaviors around this underlying thought that I, I'm not lovable, so I have to take abuse because otherwise I'll lose this love, or I'll have to settle for less, otherwise I'll lose this love. And it really keeps us from God, from being able to really download God, because this messy thinking that we have takes up a lot of space and a lot of energy in our minds and our hearts and our day. And so what the work that I do is all about clearing ourselves, clearing ourselves of all this noise and all this garbage and all this stuff that was put inside of us for whatever reason, from when we were tiny, that life just happens, right? Right, yeah. The more we can clear ourselves, the more we can say, you know, you know I like to say, make me an empty vessel for, for God to fill me because, you know, then we, we get the pure love, the pure intellect, the pure wisdom of God driving us, right, when we can get rid ourselves of all of those other things. It's interesting listening to you, I mean, especially as a pastor, you know, I, I, I almost hear you saying, like, it's really hard to overcome, I mean, you, you hear psychologists and stuff talk about the things you're talking about, what I hear you kind of saying is, like, faith is a really important part of overcoming, I mean, Kierkegaard, it was huge for him, but faith is a really important part of overcoming these subconscious things, these fears, this messy thinking and all that. Absolutely. Faith is everything. I mean, you have to know, people, people put too much power in what happens in this life yeah. instead of putting the power in God and, and, and having that faith that you can absolutely overcome everything. You can shift anything. I've, I mean, addictions, I've had people who have literally gotten over addictions, um, I had a woman who came to me who severely abused her whole life. She woke up every day wanting to die. 
um, feeling like she, sh she had no right to live, like she shouldn't be alive. She, her mother had, you know, was mentally ill, left her when she was 12, then her dad abandoned her. She was passed around to family members like a Cinderella in a Cinderella role. And she yeah. said, I, I literally woke up every day thinking I had no right to live. I should just die. And she wrote me an email after four sessions, and she said, I can honestly say I am totally free of the crushing depression I've experienced my entire life. And I just thank God. Yeah, we don't have to carry any of this stuff. That's my message to people. I just, I see people as these shining, you know, beautiful um, expressions of God. And, and it's kind of like we just need to scrub off all that junk that we've all taken on so we can shine, let our light shine the way they're supposed to. You're really writing a lot now about uh, like weight loss and personal health and things yeah. like that. And I think a lot of people would ask, well, what does weight loss have to do with God or with faith right. or with your mind or with these things? Isn't it just like right. eat better? And, and uh, how do you respond to something like that? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because what we have to really recognize that um, one of our greatest gifts is this body temple we were given. I mean, if we don't keep this body temple healthy, how will we ever become the greatest expression? If we're, uh, we're, I'm gonna, we're stuck I'm in sickness. I'm going to interject and, there because I know a lot of people, when you say body temple, yeah. like a lot of people think like that sounds kind of weird, but really that's a, that's a biblical phrase. I mean, that's what Corinthians says, that we're exactly. God's temple, right? Yep. I mean, what is it, Corinthians 6? Right? Yeah. yeah, your body is your temple. And how else, your spirit is here to do your work, do your expression, become who all you're, you're supposed to be. Um, how can you do that when you're fighting disease and illness? And it's all preventable. But what I found is, you know, people are spent, we're spending $65 billion a year on weight loss, and people are heavier and sicker than ever. And it's, it goes back to that mind thing, the subconscious thing. People are very disconnected from, you know, their bodies. They, a lot of people just shove food mindlessly in and, and poor quality food. And it's really about connecting and honoring um, this gift of our bodies, I think it's very, very important. It's, it's something we need to pay attention to. And I just feel like the way people are doing it, I could see a breakdown. Because most people who came to me for weight loss were really somewhere in their mind expecting the fat person to come out again. So they would just do this roller coaster dieting, which takes a lot of energy and, yeah. and depression. And there's a lot of emotional residue. And there's a way just like every other problem, to free yourself from that. You know, there's a lot of people probably watching on television or in the audience today who are struggling with weight or some of these different things, and they're looking at you right now and they're hating you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty, you're skinny, you know? Uh, and, and like, I mean, you know, what do you say, though? I mean, to, it doesn't, isn't there a part of this, there's all, kind of a cycle to it, isn't it? I mean, like, like you feel, like you feel overweight and you, you, you talk yourself down and then you see somebody else yes. talking about weight loss and, like, Yes, what exactly. And like first yeah. of all, I want to say that, you know, we're not all supposed to look exactly like. We're all different body type styles. So my program's called Skinny Life, and it's the real skinny on healthy, young, and fit. And that's what it is, the bottom line truth. Because we're not all supposed to be the same size, but what we're supposed to do is, is become aware of how to take the best care of our body. And it yeah. all starts with the mind, that mental programming, like the awareness, what foods do what in my body so that it can have health and fit. And, and uh, you know longevity, so I can really feel good to do the work that I'm doing. Awesome. Well, yeah. I, I'm, I hope that people check out what you're doing because I, <laughs> I know that what you're doing is holistic. It's not just about losing weight and looking better or something not like that. Right. It really is a spirit. It's a it's a part of the spiritual journey and the soul. Totally. And and I think what you're doing is really great. I, I want to encourage you. our viewers to really check out some of the things that you're talking about. I, th I think it's a big help. Thanks. And uh, and you know, there's millions of people listening around the world. Right. You know, there, if you had just like one thing to say to them, what would that one thing be? I would say that you know you have so much power inside of you, and so don't let the events that have happened in your life shut you down and control your life. You can go into that quiet space. It doesn't take really any help other than just asking God to be present. But we, we, we live in a noisy word so, world, so go into that quiet space and, and, and pray, but then listen. You know, that's what prayer, we talk, and meditation, we listen. Listen to what God's telling you. Recognize some of that subconscious programming that's shutting you down yeah. and saying, I'm ready to be free of that. Free me of that. Empty me 
Am, I'm ready to empty myself and do the work that I was made to do. Everyone has that power inside of them. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to carry those things. Right. Her name is Crystal Hansen. You can get her book on our website or online. And uh, I really, I really want to encourage you guys to check out some of her things. And Crystal, we're just so thankful. And you're going to be around to sign books and meet everybody yeah, afterwards. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. great. So Let's give her a hand that. and thank her. Thank you, Crystal, so much. Thank you. God bless thank you. you. All the best. We so appreciate you.